Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watch One. Thanks for logging on. Today, we're looking at the Breitling Chronomatic M49 Limited Edition, one of 500 made 49 millimeters in 18 karat rose gold by 14 millimeters thick. This is an upscale pilot's watch. A decidedly rich interpretation of the traditional Breitling Big Navitimer. The Chronomatic M49 is a watch that sort of embodies the aesthetic concept of Bentley meets blue sky. Both are consistent threads in recent and ancestral Breitling history, respectively, but the combination of the two in one watch, I'd have to say that's something of a gulf stream, and this is the gulf stream of Pilot's watches. Big, beautiful, bold, premium in every respect. You can see on the wrist, the 49 millimeter case is an absolute mammoth. But I'm also going to mention that this is not a voguish spawn of modern trends in large watches, but a true survivor of the golden age of the professional utility watches in the late 1960s, early 1970s. Because this 49mm case, and you can see a little bit of the birth scar at 9 o'clock right there, was originally born as part of the series known as the Breitling Reference 816 and 1806 Big Navitimers. Now, while the original Navitimer bowed in the early 1950s, the Big Navitimers, which were designed to be worn over flight suits, or even space suits, came out in the late 1960s, designed to make the circular slide rule bigger, easier to see, easier to use, and all the indications of the dial more legible for professional aviators. And you can see on my wrist, it wears every inch like a large, legible, no-nonsense instrument watch. Now, the rose gold case is a modern development, but the fact is everything about the look and feel and proportions of this watch was crafted with utility in mind. This watch harks back to an era when pilots really would rely on their watches as a backup instrument within the cockpit, and Breitling reasoned, make everything as big and obvious as possible. It has incredible heft to it. On my wrist, which is six and a third inches, 16 centimeters in circumference, you can see the watch just barely fits. While I do think the rose gold, which is nicely color keyed to most skin tones, makes it a little bit easier to wear, I do think that six inches is the lower limit for a watch of this size, but I'll add that it's exceptionally thin. For a complicated watch with a large bezel and an automatic winding chronograph movement, the watch really sits quite flush. While the outright proportions and the look of the large watch on the wrist are going to be polarizing, it's going to be a like it or leave it type of look. The bottom line is that it's not going to have any difficulty clearing a long sleeve, although designed to be worn over thick coveralls and flight suits, it could just as easily slip under a long sleeve, even a fairly tight dress cuff, I would say. Only the tightest of cuffs are going to have any trouble clearing this watch. Though 14 millimeters thick, I would say it sits no higher than about 10 or 11 off of the skin itself. Really an ergonomic dream come true. You can tell back in the 60s, Breitling watchmakers did their homework. They made sure that human beings could wear this, including on the ground, including when not in flight coveralls. I'll also mention that because the strap is so burly, it's a large square scale alligator with squared off sides and a contrasting tight hand stitch and extensive bolstering. It's actually got a lot of substance to it. Now it is um, a two-tone with an exceptionally supple underside, so it feels great against the skin, but because it has so much substance to it, and I'm gonna show you the profile shot so you can see how thick and burly this thing is, it actually counterweights the mass of the case quite nicely. So although it does have a traditional pin buckle and it doesn't have the full bracelet that I sometimes like to counterweight a large utility watch, especially a precious metal one, somehow because this just has so much strap and the strap has so much substance to it, the watch actually sits without any sense that it wants to capsize. That's an ergonomic triumph. The watch is also an aesthetic triumph and I'll add that the dial which was designed for visibility, retains that trait intact. One luxury upscale touch that's been added is the combination of rose gold hands and rose gold applied hour indices. Now they're complemented by a beautiful, almost gilt style golden print. Most of the calibrations on the inner dial, as well as the Breitling graphics that are actually printed, there's an applied rose gold Breitling B, but the graphics next to it are all in this gorgeous gilt style golden text that I really like, that harks back in my mind to, to 
to mid-century Breitling and Rolex instrument watches. Looks great and highly legible, I should add. There's a lot of contrast going on within this dial. The combination of the black of the base dial, the silver of the dished tachometer rehaut that runs around the circumference, the little shocks of red to provide high visibility contrast, the gold, the key lime of the loom. Everything here works to make the watch readable from a time-telling perspective and as an instrument. Moreover, the clear contrast between the chronograph red hands of the subdials, you can see them at 3 o'clock and 6 o'clock. They jump out from the white silver background of the subdials themselves, and then there's a beautiful multi-level effect that you get starting at the bezel and rushing downward on that concave rehaut chapter ring of the logarithmic scale calibrations to the minute scale inboard through that gilt calibration to the applied indexes you can see at the loomed parts of the indexes there's also that second elevated look you've got that layer hovering just above the dial on a more or less an equal plane with the hands themselves and then you dive down into the subdials which are cut deeply into the black of the dial for clear contrast and distinction there's complexity here and a lot of attention to detail you know, they say sometimes less is more, but this watch kind of proves that more is more. More detail, more features, more calibrations, more color, more substance. This is definitely a more is more watch, but more importantly, it proves that more is more as a philosophy can actually work. Now the watch, which features a solid case back, um, notes three bars of water resistance, so you don't want to take this one in the pool. Also that it's a special edition of 500 units, I like the fact that on a gold watch with more or less a standard ETA-based movement, you get a full solid gold case back because honestly, I don't need to see another ETA automatic chronograph caliber. I want more gold, more precious metal. Sapphires, especially the machine-made sapphires of today, they're cheap synthetic. Gold is precious and will always have value. That's why on a watch like this, where the movement is workmanlike, solid and reliable, but not necessarily an aesthetic highlight, I prefer to see a traditional marquee solid gold case back. Breitling delivers. Now the caliber itself is known as the Breitling Caliber 14, which is based on the ETA 2892A2 with the Dubois de Praz chronograph module. A vertical clutch engagement, it's very smooth, starting and stopping without any jump, stops without stagger, resets completely each time. The combination of the Nails Tough ETA 2892 base caliber with the DD module, it's kind of the best of both worlds in terms of having two of the foremost authorities in their respective fields. ETA building a tough, reliable, automatic caliber that can be serviced almost anywhere. And Dubois de Praz, complication specialist since the early 20th century, they are among the leading names in chronograph module design, and no less than Audemars Piguet avails themselves of Dubois de Praz's services for the chronograph module in the Royal Oak offshore chronographs. So in terms of provenance and pedigree, this movement, the caliber 14 and Breitling Speak, definitely has it. Also a COSC rated Swiss chronometer. It's keeping Swiss chronometer time right here on our chronoscope. It's an excellent movement that's definitely up to the task of powering a robust tool watch and, moreover, definitely up to the task of powering a robust upscale tool watch, the kind you might wear, for instance, in your Gulfstream. The bottom line is it's also a 100% complete original Breitling boxed set with all original packaging and accessories. I'd like to add that the watch features a unique burl walnut display box in mint condition that features a gorgeous, almost auburn or honey shaded suede treatment on the inside. It's really quite beautiful and it's one of the few boxes I've seen that really warrants display in its own right. It's a highlight of this watch's set and I'll also give a shout out since this is a complete set watch to the little miniature circular slide rule that comes with the watch. Now the circular slide rule which can be used to calculate by division and multiplication anything from your air speed, your speed over the ground in an aircraft, to your tip at a restaurant table. Um, it, it takes a little bit getting used to. It's actually quite simple once you learn the essentials. You can look at the instructions on Breitling's website, and then you can practice with the watch or with the model slide rule, the little mini circular slide rule 
that comes with this watch. It's rendered in cardboard, but because it's bigger than the watch itself, it makes it a little bit easier to practice with the calibrations until you get the hang of it. And let me tell you, that's a fantastic party favor. Even more than a chronograph, even more than a foudroyant or a minute repeater, the circular slide rule is definitely an entertaining piece um, guaranteed to elicit smiles when you learn how to use it. You can blitz ahead of your friends typing on their phone calculators. If all of the above sounds good to you and you want it in a premium, high-tech, but historically inspired package, I have no doubt this Breitling Chronomatic M49 limited edition of 500 is the watch you want.